So welcome back. I'm Ted Thomas, and I've been without a job and a boss for decades. Now, in this episode, I'm going to discuss how to make enough money to quit your job. I know that's where you want to be, so that's what we'll talk about. Now, a recent survey by the American Payroll Association was pretty darn revealing. The survey claimed that seven out of 10 workers would have a hard time making ends meet if their payroll checks were delayed just one week. Now, think about that. So at the end of the uh, one week they didn't have the money, they were going to have a lot of trouble. So you don't want to be in that position. So how about that? So let's plan if we're going to be a freelancer or you're going to be self-employed or you're going to be just an entrepreneur in the near future, you're going to need a bundle of money in reserve. So whatever you do, don't quit your job. Keep the job and start saving and start building your business while you're still working. Now, I wouldn't underestimate it to say that a lot of people get all excited about being an entrepreneur and they go ahead and quit their job. Don't do that. Keep your job. If it's not the perfect job, try to fix the job. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're still talking, you can probably get that fixed. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that and I'll be right back to do that. Okay. So in this episode, I'm answering your question, how to make enough money to quit your job. Now, everybody wants to do that at a certain time in their life. So your first step should be, if you really do want to quit that job, is let's start talking to the manager and the boss and see what you can do about adjusting that job, changing it, maybe higher pay, lower pay, less work, more work. There's plenty of room to improve the situation if you're talking. But if you're not talking, you don't have a job, you're going to have a tough time being a freelancer or an entrepreneur if you don't have money coming in. So maybe you want to work from home, well, that's okay with me, all right? Maybe you want to work at a regular job and then part-time at home. Or maybe you want to work full-time at home and part-time at the regular job. But my point is, don't quit your job. There's always a possibility more money, but there might be less money. But you've got to get talking about it. Don't just decide, that's it, and walk out. Because if you do that, how are you going to make enough money? Well, you're not going to make money if you quit. You need to be working in order to grow this new business. So ask your question, would you be happy if you quit this job? Will you be happy if you get what you want at this job? Either way, you got to give it a lot of serious thought. So who am I? I'm Ted Thomas. I've been involved in, in my own home business for over 30 years. Okay, that means I met the payrolls all the time. That's not an easy thing to do. So before you do anything, figure out a timetable. What sort of schedule allows you to figure out some kind of financial plan because you're going to need money to sustain yourself, to take care of you and to take care of your family. So working part-time makes sense. Working full-time makes a lot of sense until you can really get established either as the freelancer or the entrepreneur. Now, it's not so easy to be an entrepreneur unless you've already figured out what your problem-solving product is going to be. So let's talk a little bit about that. Again, part-time entrepreneur is better than not having money. It's much better to keep that job and stay in place. So you probably have already figured out, and you probably suspect, transitioning is going to be a little on the bumpy road, okay? So if you have money, you're okay. If you don't have a lot of money saved up, you better start saving now. Entrepreneurs and freelancers run out of money then you have to go to work. So that's why I say don't lose that job in the first place. All right, so what's your objective? What's your goal? Are you sure that everything you want to do is get rid of the boss? Well, I don't think you want to do that. I know a lot of people that quit the job of 40 hours a week and they go home and they work 60 hours a week and they don't make as much as they did in the 40 hour. So make arrangements for revenue. I don't know where you're going to get it. You're going to get it from doing freelance gigs. You're going to get it from, from your relatives. Where is the revenue going to come from? If you don't have a plan, it's going to be a disaster. All right, now I know that you go on the internet and everybody tells you, oh, it's going to be so easy to be an entrepreneur. You're going to get started out and you'll have life on the beach in a couple of weeks. Newspapers talk about that. The bloggers talk about that. Anybody that's writing and selling products tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that. There's no easy life as an entrepreneur. You're going to work more hours you're going to work more hours if you're a freelancer. So don't be seduced into believing that internet life. Now, if you do and you crash, you're going to be really disappointed. So just don't be seduced by that and think that it's going to be easy. Keep the job, work part-time, do something so that you know you get revenue. So I don't sugarcoat it. I tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you right now, 
Entrepreneurship is not easy. Expect to work 60 hours on a regular basis. All right, now how are you going to leverage your skills? First of all, what crafts and skills do you have? Do you have a profession? What are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. Is it a transferable skills? What problems can you solve for others? If you're going to be a successful entrepreneur, you're going to solve problems for other people. So first of all, you have to help other people. Secondly, you've got to solve their problem. If you build a product and it doesn't solve problems, or if you have a service and it doesn't solve problems, either your service or your product, if it doesn't solve a problem, forget it because you're going to waste your time. Nobody's going to buy it. So the transition is going to be bumpy because you sell it. And do you have any experience in selling? Do you have any experience at marketing and sales? Another thing that you need to start thinking about. All right. Now, I don't know whether you're going to need six months of savings or whether you're going to need a year of savings, but you need to know how much money you're going to need, how much you're going to use during that period. What's the burn rate? How much do you need? How much do your family need? If you haven't taken care of that, it's going to be a problem. Now, I've been in business for 30 years, started out small. It grew to a seven-figure business. How do we do that? Well, you did that from home by knowing what people want first and providing a problem-solving product. You're in the people business. You've got to help people. and You've got to help them solve their problem, either with a product or with a service. Now, my discovery wasn't something that was new. It had been around for 100 years. I just had blinders on and I didn't see it. And so when I finally did see it, it was nothing more than traditional real estate, except they were defaulted real estate. So what's traditional real estate? It's houses, it's vacant residential lots that are buildable, it's small farms, it's apartments, it's lots of brokers, it's attorneys, it's title companies. You know what that traditional business. This is the same business, except its properties have gone in default. Now, what does that mean? That means the people didn't pay their taxes. So nationwide, we have 3,000 counties. Think about that. 3,000 counties, and in every county, there's properties that are going to default. That means the county doesn't have money to pay their bills. So the legislature of the state set aside rules, and they call them statutes, rules, and those rules say everybody pays property tax. If you don't pay property tax, the legislature will have the county board of commissioners or the board of supervisors, county commissioners, they'll tell them, look, mandate that the treasurer levy the tax, collect the tax. If they can't collect it, confiscate. In other words, take the property away. So that's what they do. Now think about that. Those properties are being taken away from people. Now what is the county going to do with that property? Well, the county doesn't want the property, but what the county has is a problem. They got to pay for the school teachers. They got to pay for the police department. They got to pay for the fire department, the sheriff. They have to pay the county employees. So what they do is they take that property and they sell it at auction. Now, when they sell it at auction, they don't want to be in the real estate business. They just want to get rid of it. So the state legislature tells them, just sell it and sell it with enough money to pay the taxes. So what they do is they discount those properties. So they levied it. So the tax assessor knows what it's worth. So it might have $100,000 worth on the property and an assessed value, but they're going to sell it for 10 cents, 20 cents, or 30 cents on the dollar. Now, think of what I'm saying. I'm saying they're going to discount that property by 60, 70, and 80%. Now, if you could buy a traditional real estate for 60 or 70 or 80% discount, that'd be great. Now, these aren't so traditional. These are used and abused, maybe slightly abused. Now, some of them are junk, so don't buy the junk. Some of them are moving quality. I don't know which one you're going to get, but you get to choose. You can choose any one you want, and they're going to sell them 60, 70, 80% discount. Now, how can you do this? Anybody can do this business. Anybody that wants to do it, there's 3,000 counties. They're all going to sell these. Okay. The treasurer is going to auction those properties. They're going to auction them to the highest bidder. And where are they going to do that? They're going to do that at a public auction. Anybody is authorized to go to that auction. This is a state controlled mandated business. They do it every single year. So there's 3,000 counties. There's probably 5,000 auctions every year. You can buy at any one of those auctions that you want to do. So what are we talking about? How to make enough money so you can quit your job. Well, what if you could make $25,000 or $50,000 on one property? Would that be enough money so you could quit your job? Darn right it would be. So these properties are sold at auction. You just need to learn how to do this. So keep your job. Don't quit your job. Start learning a new business. If you've already got a profession, think about how you could transfer the skill. If you've already got a craft, 
then you could also transfer the skill. If you're licensed as, as a plumber or an electrician or whatever, how are you going to transfer the skill? The point is, don't quit that job until such time as you have enough money saved up. My name is Ted Thomas. If you get involved in this business, don't buy properties that you haven't seen. Why? Because what happens if there was a hurricane? What happens if there was a fire? What happens if it was next to a chicken farm? People buy properties they haven't seen. What if you get there and it's already burned down or something like that? You're not going to want that property, but you're going to own it because you bought it at the auction. Also, don't buy any property until you know what they're going to sell it for. The beauty of this business is you're going to buy for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar. You can figure out quickly what you're going to sell it for and you'll be in the profit. So today's lesson was all about how to make enough money so you can quit your job. I love this business because you make 25 and $50,000 on one deal. I'm Ted Thomas.